Hello and welcome to another edition of the Workplace Tech Spotlight. My name is Guillermo Correa, Managing Director of SHRM Labs, SHRM's Workplace Innovation Lab. I'm your host for this series where we shine a spotlight on some of the most interesting future of work topics, innovators, and disruptive technologies. So we have some general announcements before we get started and some housekeeping. Um, the application deadline for the Better Workplaces Challenge Cup member track is fast approaching. As many of you know, this is the leading workplace tech pitch competition. And this year, we added the member track for SHRM members to showcase how the people who know the workplace the best, HR, are innovating. The application period will close on February 19th, and the winner of this competition will receive a trip to the SHRM Annual Conference and Exposition which is back in Vegas this year, and it's gonna be June 11th through the 14th. As many of you know, this is the largest HR conference in the world. I'm also happy to announce, and I think a lot of you have already heard this, in March, we're gonna be hosting our first Sherm Tech event in the US. This is actually an expansion from our India Sherm Tech event. We're bringing it to the, uh, the US for the first time. Sherm Tech NorCal is being held at the Grand Hyatt, San Francisco, March 7th through the 8th. This is the premier HR tech event for HR decision makers that want to lead innovation or HR digital transformation in the workplace. Registration is open now and there's a limited number of spots that are available and I hope you can join us. Finally, for those of you watching on LinkedIn or other social media platforms, please share this live stream and tag SHRM. You can use the hashtag SHRM Labs as well as uh, Workplace Tech. So today we're going to dive into a topic that touches on leading HR digital transformation. If we, as we've said previously in the show, we strongly, and I can't emphasize that enough, we strongly believe that HR is best positioned to lead workplace innovation and organizational development. The world of work is evolving at a very, very fast pace. Just this morning, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that U.S. employers added 517,000 new jobs in January, bringing the unemployment rate down to 3.4%. And that's even with the layoffs being experienced in the tech sector. A recent McLean & Company report found that organizations are at different stages in their digitization journeys. Of the firms that are undergoing a digital transformation project, 97% they are up, said they are optimizing HR processes, 93% are expanding the use of existing technologies, and 88% are exploring additional technologies. In order for HR to keep up with these changes, it is critical for areas of an HR operation, such as preventing paperwork loss, standardization of forms, payroll, and time management to be automated. However, this doesn't mean that you flip the switch and walk away. HR must figure out how to um, automate processes while maintaining a human touch. That is very, very important. So joining us to talk about this topic today is Jay Palaki, CEO and founder of HR Geckos. She's a former HR executive that understands very, very well the issues HR deals with on a daily basis. So Jay, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the stage. And you know, before we dive into this topic, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, yourself as well as uh, HR Geckos. Thank you, Guillermo. I'm so excited to share my story with the SHRM audience. Um, to borrow a term from Botany, I've had a variegated HR career. You know, my education and background in IO psychology led me to work for organizations in various industries and sectors from large multinational corporations and government agencies to small consulting firms. And I can say that in my 20 plus years as an HR practitioner, my career has definitely spanned the entire breadth of the continental United States. And I like to tell my HR story of how I started in the HR brew of the beer giant Anheuser-Busch um, and learned to weld HR in the oil and gas pipelines at the energy giants of Chenier Energy in Texas, Louisiana, and Southern California. 
gas in California, how I rode the HR train into the Maryland Department of Transportation in the DC metro area, uh, rang the fire bell at several fire departments, including the Philadelphia Fire Department and the South Chicago Fire Department, uh, where I got to uh, you know bond with fire chiefs um, at the fire station that was featured in the Kurt Russell movie, Ladder 49. And in the midst of all this, you know, I studied HR at um, the LA Sheriff SWAT uh, teams while speeding against traffic and almost getting shot uh, like Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. <laughs> and, you know, I really found in the midst of all this HR's purpose and my purpose, uh, in, you know, in, in my career. And I learned so much about how people are the lifeblood and the lifeline of every organization. You know, um, HR Geckos, my HR technology startup, was born out of all these experiences in my HR career. And at HR Geckos, true to our name, our purpose is to create agile workplaces so that people and organizations can thrive. You know, HR as agile, as a gecko is our motto. And what we do is we digitize the key human resources processes and unify all of our disjointed HR systems to focus on what matters most, our people. Okay, fantastic, excellent. Well, you know, we have a short period of time here, so let's get right into it, you know. so. Can you describe for the audience some of the, you know, what is it that HR professionals are encountering with the pace of change in, in the workplace right now? You know, we, we're all very aware of, you know, what happened over the past few years with the pandemic and everything and, and you know, how HR had to, to step up and everything. But, you know, tell the audience a little bit about that. So, you know. If we think the pandemic is behind us, Guillermo, our world of work is in chaos. And, and you can attest this to, uh, too, Guillermo, because many of our HR colleagues are tearing their hair out today. You know, existing HR systems are built around the old paradigms of work, and we have several disparate and disjointed HR systems that don't talk to each other, while our workforce expects everything at the click of a button just like they get that outside of the workplace. And in addition, we in HR have a big, big reputation problem. So all of this adds to the challenges that our, us as HR practitioners are facing today in the workplace and the number of paper boxes <laughs> and the paper and manual processes that we have in HR are really not helping us. You know, I often say this, um, and I tell this anecdote of how when I first started um, as an HR leader at an organization, I was handed this conference room full of boxes of paper. There were applications, I-9s, all kinds of forms that had not been digitized because there wasn't a digital mindset in the organization and there wasn't um, an HR leader who took this on themselves to make sure that you know, these disjointed paper processes uh, were made into a digital uh, you know, platform and made into and digitized so that it took away all of that you know, hair pulling <laughs> and teeth pulling um, a problem that we have when it comes to delivering HR services in the organization. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, you know, I, I have a colleague here at Sherm that, that in the past has, has joked around and said, you know, hey, it's, it's not your grandma's HR anymore, right? And, and, and I think it's very true when you take into account, you know, everything that, that, that's happened um, over the last 10 years or so, especially, you know, when you begin to introduce you know, things like like the iPhone, right? And how that revolutionized the, the workplace. And now, you know, the, the most recent thing that, that people have been talking about or, or that has been impacting the workplace a lot is uh, the whole chat around chat GPT, right? And, and you know, automated tools and things like that. So um, what are some of the insights you have found from, you know, from, from your experience that you can share with the audience? So we in HR are the employee experience makers and the enablers um, in, the, in the organization. You know, and if we are bogged down by repetitive administrative and paper-driven manual processes that take up more than 50%, sometimes 70% of our time, we are not able to focus on the critical business issues like employee engagement, 
building a culture of innovation and growth. Um, and, you know, being present in all those moments that matter to our employees today. So I see, I believe that we have to definitely shift away from being a paper first HR function, you know, where we see people as a problem to be managed. And we need to shift towards a people first HR business partner, a partner in the business where we solve for people while leveraging technology. And, you know, in, in today's world of work, we just can't do digital anymore. We need to be digital right now, and we need to shift our mindset and our work operations from paper first to digital first. Um, there was a, a research study conducted by the Sherm Research Institute uh, in late 2021, early 2022. Uh, it was called the Workplace Automation Survey. And they found that 42% of HR pro professionals say their organization plans to continue using, expand upon, or develop workplace automation over the next five years. And believe it or not, this automation and artificial intelligence will continue to evolve um, you know, within our businesses and within our HR function. And we definitely have to take on this digital first mindset now than ever before. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, we are big proponents. We Actually, if you go back to our workplace tech spotlights that we began doing at the beginning of, 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 of this year, you know, we are, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, hammering the message that it's time for HR to step up. HR needs to lead workplace innovation. HR needs to lead HR digital transformation. You have to lead it. It can't be IT. It can't be marketing. It can't be operations. It can't be finance. It has to be HR, you know, and as a matter of fact, I mentioned, you know, the Sherm Tech event at the beginning of, 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 uh, um, of the program. And, and that's the reason why we're bringing it to the U.S. You know, we, the, the, the program is really focused on the HR professional. It's not about, you know, seeing product or vendor demos or, or talking about that. It's about upskilling um, HR. So let me ask you this. Um, in your opinion, what's keeping HR from seeing themselves as the people who should be leading in innovation and digital transformation in the workplace? Well, I've looked at, at this problem over my career, you know, in large and um, small organizations from uh, three different perspectives. Um, when I see my HR colleagues, I do find that we need to invest in educating our workforce on what to expect from HR. Um, you know, there is a lot of back and forth that happens between employees and the HR departments, um, but we are not clear in our messaging on how um, we can be that resource, that awesome resource in, in an employee's journey in our organizations. And when we, you know, propose how we want to go about doing this, we also need to back it all up with concrete um, delivery. So um, there are times when, you know, we think that we want to do digital, but we do not have the means and resources uh, to do digital because we do not have the support of our leadership. And this is still in existence in today's workplace. Believe it or not, HR is still, you know, not given the adequate funding and the resources to do all the awesome workplace um, projects that we are um, there to actually, you know, promulgate in the organization. Um, the, the second uh, big thing that I see is our PR problem. You know, we um, have a big reputation problem in HR. Let me say this. In, in, within the organization, outside of the organization, HR branding has not happened in the way that it should have happened even through the, the past couple of years through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, only a handful of business leaders and employees have an in-depth understanding of how HR works. And, you know, employees' past experiences with HR, uh, which you and I know were not always too flattering, are informing the current expectations and perceptions um, that employees have of HR. And it is kind of like a vicious cycle. Um, so how do we go from this vicious cycle to a virtuous cycle? You know, we need to make HR very user friendly. We use a lot of jargon that business leaders and employees um, can't understand. And we have all these paper driven processes. How do we shift away from this paper first uh, HR mindset to a people first HR mindset where we are solving for people 
while leveraging technology, we have so much today in terms of technology on offer. As you can see, just with the with the number of uh, you know organizations that have come out of the woodwork with solving all of the different challenges we have in the HR function, there's a lot of technology and tools out there. Uh, so we need to bust that myth that is associated with the old HR, like you said, the the HR of Ramsey. our. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we need to show them that we are not the slow, unresponsive uh, function that is in existence only to protect the organization, but that, you know, we are here to uh, hold the employee's hand in every step of their journey in the organization and make this a seamless experience for them. Because today, as you know, it's both the physical and the digital experience, and they, they both matter to the employee. And how seamless are we making this digital experience is, is our challenge in 2023 and beyond. I agree with you. And, and you know, a cra crazy idea that I've had in, in my head is that one of the ways that can help HR to rebrand itself is to um, be upfront with employees, and maybe some of these digital tools will help in, in regards to that. But be upfront with employees and with employees in regards to the rights that they have, right? Because when you think about it, an organization, a corporation, an enterprise, they have HR that's supporting them. They have you know legal teams that are supporting them. But then that one single employee, right, who may not understand like some of the nuances of the workplace, right, like. Like for example, retaliation, right? And 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 how an employee could could you know cope with retaliation at work, right? Those are some of the things that I think HR should be upfront with employees and letting them know how how you know how how they could um, what's the word that I'm that I'm looking for here uh, counteract the retaliation at work, right? Um, so you know we're running out of time here, so I, I want to make sure we address some of these other you know uh, topics or questions that we have here. So what are some of resources that you can uh, provide for the audience out there that um, you know that they might be able to use uh, to better understand how to automate HR operations? Um, so we do have a small um, white paper that we are able to share the link to. Um, on how you can really simplify HR processes for your workforce and for your business. Um, you know, there is a great business value in, uh, in digitizing HR processes and automating HR processes because the faster and more accurate and more optimized resolution um, that you can provide to uh, employees' requests um, by overcoming all the manual processes and subsequent delays, um, we are here to provide that great employee experience. And the business value is that when your employees are satisfied, your customers are going to be satisfied even more. Um, so there is great value in digitizing HR processes. And, and when I say digitize, you know, there is a difference between taking a paper uh, form and just turning it into a PDF and allowing it to be downloaded versus actually digitizing that entire form. You know, there is this form, the personnel action form, the evil PAF, <laughs> all our HR colleagues know about this form that has to go through multiple approvals and multiple steps for an action, an employee action um, to be completed in the organization. That form, oh my God, you know, you really can digitize that form. Why are you not yeah. digitizing this form? And there are tools today to help you do that. You know, yeah. so our HR leaders definitely need to focus on these productivity gains uh, that we can get from being freed from all of these mundane manual Excel operations, um, you know, to focus on the more high value activities that are related to the business's core, which is nothing but our people. Um, and so our HR leaders definitely need to be more courageous and they need to be more helpful in helping their teams understand that they can start small, you know, um, and then move slowly towards digitizing their work. We have so many checklists that we can use uh, to help you really digitize HR processes. And, you know, I often think about this in terms of how do we eat the elephant, right? Uh, and I like to say one HR byte, the digital byte at a time, um, because eating one bite at a time is better than eating none at all. So 
Yeah, that's, that's no, what, absolutely. As a, as a matter of fact, you know, one of the things that I love to tell my team here at, at, uh, at Sherm Labs is that, you know, yeah, we, we have a whale of a project, but guess what? We're going to be eating it one bite at a time because we're, we're not going to be swallowing an entire whale. So, hey, um, last, last question for you, right? So with, you know, 2023, you know, a lot of people are, are viewing that as a, as a very uncertain year, you know, that we have ahead. We're, you know, we're into February now, beginning of February. Um, what are some of the things that you think teams out there should consider to, to stay on track? Definitely, definitely keep the physical and the digital aspects of our work uh, in perspective. You know, the, the digital that I mentioned earlier is the new normal today. How do we make the seamless between the digital world and the physical world for our employees? And, you know, as our companies move into this permanently kind of hybrid future, we in HR are going to have a really, really big role in helping our workforce find purpose at work. That is definitely something that we should be thinking about. And lastly, um, automation and artificial intelligence, ChatGPT, will continue to evolve and take on repetitive tasks, both company-wide and specifically within our HR department. So we really, really need to do all of this while keeping the focus on what matters most. That is our people. Fantastic. Excellent. You know, I'm still like amazed at how this whole chat GPT discussion has taken off like wildfire. But, you know, that, that we could, we could probably stay here, you know, a whole day talking about it. All right. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Jay, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. It's been a wonderful conversation. And for you out there, you know, we really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like more information on HR geckos, please visit them at hrgeckos.com. We also hope that you're going to join us at ShermTech in March. As I mentioned at the beginning, spaces are limited, so be sure to register now. This is the premier HR tech event for HR professionals that are interested in leading workplace innovation. Thank you all for tuning in to Sherm Labs Workplace Tech Spotlight. If you enjoy this live stream, please share it using the hashtag Sherm Labs Workplace Tech and Sherm. Visit us at ShermLabs.com to stay up to date. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend.